starting. Okay, so welcome to the Chaos Common Metrics Working Group Meeting for April 30th, 2020. Um, so we have a few things on the agenda today. Most of it's based on kind of iterations of stuff we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. So let's just start with that first one. So we had the, the types of contributions metric and we, we finalized it for the rolling release. Did, did that ever actually get released? I sort of lost, I got busy and I lost track of it. I know Kevin was working on some stuff, but I just wanna make sure that we did indeed actually release that or if not, follow up with. Uh, let me share my screen and show you what we've got. Perfect. We have... Georg is like the perfect setup. I know. I was just thinking Garrick sounds so professional right now. <laughs> yes. You just sound Thank like you. professional, like <laughs> newscaster, podcaster. Yeah. Dude. yeah. I'm using <laughs> every online meeting now to practice my podcasting voice. <laughs> So here in this chaos metrics released, this is the website. We, Kevin renamed the focus areas for the common working group to be aligned what we have in the repository. When we go to what, this is where types of contributions lives. And so here it is. And oh, okay, here's the perfect. disclaimer. And then so this is what Sorry. it looks like. Sorry, I'm scrolling through real fast because no, we've looked at it for a long time. And then in the release. That even when it's off, it thinks it's on. And so it puts full screens over there sometimes. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. And then in the release history, we now have a new section here, continuous metric contribution since last release, where for the common working group, we now have a new metric types of contributions. So anyone who looks at this release history is alerted that we changed it. Okay. Cool. Just add that to the notes so that's done. Um, and then we need to review the action items and notes from the previous meeting. Uh, as Matt and I were just talking there, there may not be a ton of progress, at least not from my side. Um, well, Matt, you did add the, I did uh, something. <laughs> the label to the top of the metrics page with the disclaimer, um, or so someone did. I did, or okay. someone did. <laughs> uh, let's see, Matt, update metric to add code review as a bullet after coding. Looks like that's done. Uh, Dawn, to do the commits stuff. I have not done that yet. How about Sean? Did you get the, did you look at the language? No, distribution? of course not. No, I, yeah, haven't, okay. I haven't gotten to that. It's on my list though. <laughs> okay. So I'll just add this for action items to follow up next meeting. Um, okay. Did I miss any? Were there any other action items in there? I don't see any others. Nope. Even if we go to the week before, there's nothing more. Okay. Um, and then we also kind of standing thing, look at the progress on the metrics spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, which I guess, I guess I could share. So the one on here, time to close. Can you all see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes I forget what I'm looking at. How many of you try to actually scroll on somebody's screen share? Ever? All the time. I'm, all the time. Constantly. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's like, a, why isn't this working? Oh, <laughs> not my screen. <laughs> yeah. So often. Time to close row 24. 
the close. And you're going to call it close it in the sense that uh, it's Is done. It... Uh, <laughs> sorry, what? I, I think I missed part of what you said. So time to close, row 24. Uh huh. If you click on that Google Doc. Mm -hmm. It's pretty well along. That's what I'm saying. So, like, do we want to change it for ready for release? And yeah, right. I mean, is this one to take a look at in terms of moving it towards the continuous release? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We could spend a little time just kind of working through that. Um, so, well, that's actually one of the other, so that's, that's actually next on the agenda. So, okay. or one of the other things on the agenda. So we'll, we'll okay. work on that one, okay, okay. um, in a bit. And then the other one types of contributions went from ready to released. And then, so like you said, time to close is really um, getting really close. Mm -hmm. So I think the other bit that we need to kind of figure out is what, what do we want to work on next? Well, so there was the, down in that where, like rows 28 through 31. Mm -hmm. Those you can see the, the metric names. I think it was just me like jotting down what we were trying to capture. Yeah. And so I don't know if you want to spend time thinking about what those metrics might be with a little bit more precision. <laughs> <laughs> what was written there, that's all. Yeah. These. I'm sorry, I was late to the meeting, by the way. If you want to jump back to that release bullet point, uh, we can talk about it if there were any questions you want to add. No, it all looks good. Yeah, I think our the, the summary of that was, yay, it's released, everything looks great, and I don't have to worry about this anymore, um, unless you have anything else you want to tell us about it. Uh, nope, I don't think so. OK, perfect. Thank you, um, Kevin, for making the release happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much. No problem. So I will, uh, I'll, I know it's not this work group, but I will I'll move on to the evolution uh, release now. I just, I wanted to make sure this one went okay first, so. Yes. Yeah, it looks good, thanks. Okay, so the next, um, and I, I actually really like the idea of working on one of the space metrics. Um, next because that's the one that we don't have anything in right now right so we have we have things now released in three of our four focus areas so it would be nice to get something released in in the where category um is there anybody that wants to sort of take one of these ideas and kind of turn it into a metric that we can talk about next time um, um, under space, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I have a question for you, Don, which yeah. is of these four kind of from your industry perspective or John, um, are, are these any, are any of these more meaningful than the others? Like where the. I mean, from my standpoint, probably the, the two that I, I would care about the most are probably the, the top two. Okay. Um, the collaboration platforms is always interesting because um, a lot of the community interaction happens in loads of different places, depending on the type of, you know, the type of project. And so that's something that I think 
um, I think is important. And I'm also, I, I've been spending a lot more time recently thinking about where software is released, interestingly enough, because I've been counting releases on GitHub and realizing that a lot of projects don't, don't put their yeah. releases on GitHub. So you have yeah. things like, like Helm charts, which are released somewhere else, or you have packages, which are released in distributions. You have all of these places that things can be released. Yeah, packages are um, kind of actually, they're, they're, a ma they're, from the perspective of chaos, they're a mess we haven't tackled yet. Um, because- A lot of uh, irony of calling that chaos, but go on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, right? Uh, so uh, we, uh, early on, uh, Matt's team, Vinod, uh, Kevin, and I, and Matt, I can't remember if others were involved, but that was the main group. We looked at, we looked pretty deeply into libraries.io, and we, the median number of libraries that come out of uh, a GitHub repo, where that library comes from, is 40. So, and there's as many as 500 is the, is the max. So the, the, the relationship between libraries and repositories is a, a challenge we haven't addressed in any of our metrics yet, but if, and when we want to, I think that it's going to change how we think about some of our tooling. Yeah, I would agree. I think, I think both of those first two are really interesting. The release, yeah, because that has just so many different angles. I mean, there's the GitHub angle. There's, you know, people using um, like NPM or you know tooling like that. And and I think there's probably some interesting correlation as to how it also maps out to the larger um, you know language communities as it goes to. Um, so I think those first two make sense. Um, the third one would have made sense, you know, about a little over two months ago, back when we used to do things like this. <laughs> um, I, the, 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 where are the events located? Um, oh, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> on, on which, which zoom, what's the zoom channel? I think is the question. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I think, and, and actually maybe, maybe that parlays into something interesting there of like how communities balance between physical and virtual. I don't, I don't know if that's inherent in that, um, that metric, but it's maybe something to think about. Um, the fourth one, I think that's kind of interesting. I, th I mean, I guess I think all four are very interesting. I mean, I'd, I would say that it definitely comes after the first one and you could make an argument between the second and the fourth one to me very interestingly. Um, Cause the infrastructure is kind of like, I mean, we hear all the anecdotal stuff of, um, you know, people shifting to GitHub Actions, people who are hosting their own Jenkins, people who are, you know, using Travis CI and, and I don't, and I think some sort of concept around some of that might be interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's sort of an interesting one there. It's a little bit different in a way of that where we've seen like some of the other metrics. Cause I feel like if I look at like the people ones below, it's very project centric. And I feel like those there are kind of going out in the space where you're almost doing analysis across or analyses across the entire open source community and breaking that down. So it's almost like a, it, I, I don't know, it, it feels like a different s sort of level of metric in my head. I don't know. So. Uh, I was having the same. I was having the same thought that I think that these are more of categories of metrics, and maybe there are some specific metrics that we need to define within each of these because these do feel they feel bigger. They feel more like more like categories than maybe specific metrics. So, like in the case of the last one, where infrastructure the project is hosted, there's where is the Git repository? You know, what platform is that on? But I. I in, in the risk working group, we started to talk about what what is the what is the configuration at a very detailed level of the machine that compiled that code um, that's going to run it, and so that's a piece of infrastructure. So, depending on how you define what a project is, and I think it's likely one definition is the repository, but I think another definition of infrastructure and project includes these different deployment environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you actually look like uh, Kubernetes, for example, has a whole, uh, I think it's a working group, maybe? The Kate's, Kate, there's a Kate's infra group that does nothing but manage the infrastructure for Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's a whole bunch of people and it's a whole bunch of different places where things are managed so you know like documentation is in one place and websites and blogs are in another and the code is hosted in a certain place and then there's you know there's you know there's slack that's you know that's where discussions are hosted there are google groups there's like, there's a like, whole bunch of stuff like for a project the, like who, go ahead continuous integration like release tooling all that kind of stuff i was going to say real quick what's the differentiation between where the infrastructure of a project is hosted and collaboration platforms because it seems like we're kind of talking about the same thing yeah, as I was talking about, I do think that the collaboration platforms are probably probably a piece of the infrastructure that's hosted. But like when you mentioned Kubernetes, I immediately thought somebody has got to have a pretty big data center of hardware to do testing. Yeah, an like actual project. physical location. Yeah, like there has to be a there has to be a lot of physical equipment to, if you're going to actually test something that does what Kubernetes yeah. does. And I don't know who, I have no idea who owns that or where that runs, but I'm pretty sure it's not a Travis, I'm pretty sure it's not a Travis build. Given, so, that, it, given that it started at Google, a lot of this runs in the cloud and, and um, the, in GC. Okay. Or also uh, or sponsorship or ownership of the infrastructure, for example, if, if uh, the Linux Foundation is providing the infrastructure. So it's, it's like physical space and, and who is providing it. By infra so infrastructure, do you mean organiz I think you're talking to them again about organizational infrastructure? Uh, the sponsor infrastructure. I, is that what you mean? I was more of? talking about the, the physical infrastructure. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like collaboration platforms for me says GitHub. GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. Yeah, physical infrastructure says yeah. this Git, GitHub is hosted on this physical infrastructure and it's provided by the Linux Foundation. That's, that's kind of how I differentiate the two. Uh, but, but maybe I'm thinking about it uh, in a weird way. Yeah, and that gets, it actually gets relatively tricky sometimes too because one of the things we realized not that long ago within, within Kubernetes was that there, um, there were a few things that there were only like two people at Google who had the permissions to do. And it was related to something that was in, in one of the Google Cloud services and it had to do with how we release Kubernetes. Um, and and I, think we've, I think we've solved that and given more people access to whatever it was. And I don't remember any of the details, but, but that was a case where like, theoretically everything's hosted by the CNCF because it's a CNCF project. But in reality, there were key bits of the infrastructure that were actually kind of owned and hosted by other people. Things like things like domain names, where like you know somebody purchased the domain name um, and never bothered to you know it, it's in use by the project, but never bothered to transfer ownership of it to the you know the body that owns it. So from a from a chaos mm -hmm. perspective, our website is is hosted and run by the Linux Foundation. And within, within our project, there are two or three of us that have the ability to do things on the website, but no one on this project has administrative access, right? It's completely under the control of the Linux Foundation. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't give anyone on this project administrative access to my <laughs> server. No, but that's, that's fine. That I mean, they, 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 you shouldn't give it to me either, and I'm with the <laughs> Linux Foundation. <laughs> but that's that's a little bit different because the mm. Linux Foundation owns the project, and they do own key bits of the infrastructure. The problem is yeah. when key bits of the infrastructure are owned by people who don't actually run the project yeah. anymore. So maybe that's sort of a way, because I, I think where I was coming with this, I was sort of struggling as I was thinking about this metric of like, what are you trying to learn? Like, what is what is the outcome you're getting in here from? And like I said, in the, in the people one, it seemed very clear. It's like, you're trying to look at yourself at a project and understand like, where is my hotspots of, you know, contributors coming from, what are my hotspots of employers and kind of getting assessments here. You know, as I'm looking at this, like, it's going to be very static for a project. Like, there's not going to be like, they'll, they'll be very like, you know, here's my mail client, here's where I do my Slack, here's where my builds are, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like here, it's more of an intent of how could I compare like a Kubernetes infrastructure to a Prometheus infrastructure or something like that. I don't know, maybe that's not even the right apples to apples. Like it, it I guess I'm just trying to think in my head, like how would one apply these metrics? Because it feels different than the other ones 
to me, yeah. but I'm also still, I tag myself as the newbie here, so I could be completely missing. I, I, I think the initial comment somebody made that that's not one metric is, I think it was yeah. Dawn, that, that's a, that comment's on the mark. <laughs> like yeah, there are I a think lot these of are, things in there. Yeah. Okay, well, in um, just considering time, so it's half past the hour and we're gonna try to end meetings 10 to 15 minutes early so that people have a break between Zoom meetings. Um, so we don't have a ton of time, but uh, Matt has taken the action item to start building some of these out for the next meeting. So I assume that means um, creating the Google Docs that we can use to collaborate on these, um, or at least some element of these for, for the next meeting. Um, does that seem reasonable, Matt? Yep, I just put the two starter Google Docs in there. Okay, cool. So. We'll just start working off those. Okay. And I don't, when you were saying like some of these might be headers to which are comprised of other metrics, I, were you talking about all five of these or like collaboration platforms could still be a metric unto itself? And I don't know, just as we were talking about it, it seemed like there's a lot in it. And I'm thinking about, you know, kind of the situation we got into with the, was it the documentation one in DNI? Yeah. where we defined this metric and then all of a sudden it was like it was like wow this is not a single thing this is actually several things okay. so we don't necessarily need to break them out now we can start talking about one of these areas in the doc and then break mm -hmm. it out um okay i'll just start and then if right and then kind of like the dni metric if it becomes clear that this should be broken down further we'll okay just, okay cool Okay, so I just made a note that those uh, links are in the uh, release spreadsheet, right? Is that what this is called? The Yes, the release tracking. Yeah. Okay. And then the other, the other thing that we wanted to do was um, sort of finalize the time to close metric. Do you want me to, uh, Matt, since you've been working on that, do you want me to stop sharing and you want to share that? Sure. Alrighty, there you go. Um, so if you, it'd be easy too if you could all kind of head over that direction. Because I think at this point, what we need to do is really just give it a read and any final edits that we're seeing in this. Um, so I think we've spent time pretty well in this. So, I just dropped a link to it in both the notes and the chat. Thanks. So could I suggest we just take five minutes on this call? Yeah, and sounds good. Give it a read and assemble back in five minutes and make edits as you'd like.
I'm gonna do we want just a few more minutes? You know, seem like we're all working. Let's just go a few more minutes. Alrighty, um, we can take a look at this. Is everybody all right to take a look at the comments? Okay, cool. Um, Georg, a dictionary. All right, we can put it in the handbook, maybe. Yeah, it's not something we need to do right now. Okay, um, all right. John, you yeah. had a couple. Uh, yeah. yeah, the only one, and I think I, I think I resolved to just rewording it. I think it was, I was just trying to make sure I'm wrapping my head on objective two. It was more of just trying to see like, what are the characteristics that impacts whether something closes quickly or slowly? I think that's where you're after. I was just, the wording threw me off, but I think once I added like two or three words, it helped. I don't, I don't know if that, if that's, if I'm in line with what you're thinking. I don't remember who wrote, this is an under objectives, number two. Yeah, sorry. Yep, so I don't know who wrote that or when it was written. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who owned we'll, that. We'll, we'll blame the uh, anonymous cheetah that isn't here. Um, <laughs> I will accept, okay, that's been accepted. All right, I just, okay. I just accepted it. So that's okay, cool. That looks good. Cool. Yeah, otherwise this looks really, I don't, I don't okay. see anything. Yeah, that's anything happening. Matt, you're right. There, there, for some reason there were duplicates of our endpoints. Yeah, so I um I went line. on the tools providing the metric, it was kind of messy through there. So um, I got rid of, I'm suggesting to get rid of these examples because we have Augur implementation and Grimoire Lab implementation, which uh -huh. are examples. Um, and there was even some duplication there. So everybody all right with just removing those? I didn't yeah. get rid of anything. I mean, it's still... Yeah. Um, the known instance, I don't know. Georg, can you speak to what that is? Right here under tools providing the metric, this known instance. I, I think that's uh, another um, just example how it lives in the wild. Is it a known instance of? Grimoire uh, lab. But like of 
pull requests or issues or? Well, let's go to it and check it out. It is time to close for issues. So time to close for issue. So is it issue efficiency? Is it this down below? Under Grimoire. The question is more, is this different than what we have? Yeah, does it below. add? Yeah, exactly. Does it add something? But I, I'm happy to get rid of it. It's just a practical example. If someone wants to see an example of it living in the wild. Okay. But oh, you're on the side of getting rid of it. Okay. All right. Um, so, Paul, Sean, I'm guessing you cleaned up those links. Yep. Yeah, I did, in fact, do that. You were correct. They're over redundant. I, I don't. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but they're still. Thinking, they still just on me. They're not the anchor isn't working is it just me uh, let me check when other people click those links are you going to two different pages these links under auger implementation or two different spots on the page oh i see what you're saying it looks like it, that link is for whatever reason just taking you to the top it is of the page yeah. uh, anchor doesn't seem to be working to close resolution duration repo. Okay, interesting okay. the, oh, the you bottom know link actually links to the pivotal. I, I took out, I thought I changed that. I thought uh, I changed, did I not change that? I tried to change all the pivotal ones to auger. Uh, did I not succeed? Yeah, okay, all right. So we just did a new release and I have the new, uh, I have the new, I guess the dot documentation endpoint changed slightly. The repo, the actual endpoint didn't, but where the docs are did. And I'm just evolution issue, closed issue resolution duration. All right, hang on. I'm gonna fix, uh, so. Okay, this so well. <clears throat> Let's replace this right now with the correct <laughs> link. Okay, why don't you replace those and let's talk about the last bit sure. since we only have five minutes left. Right so move down right. to data collection. Yep. I hadn't looked at that, so I don't know if folks want to chime in. Obviously, Don, you were taking a look at that. I was. It was mostly just things that were awkwardly worded and I fixed some of them and then this one I didn't quite know what to do with. Which one? Uh, Which sorry, the faster the development process will take place. Yeah, I was just looking at that too. Um, I was thinking about just deleting that sentence. I, that's a good idea actually. I don't think that really, this sentence, I don't know that it, does anybody think it adds anything that we can't just delete it? Yeah, it apparently adds confusion. <laughs> Done. Yeah, and it's <laughs> just probably also because, like, yeah, I agree. So just some, because for, we do things fast doesn't mean we're effective. So yeah. for yeah. some reason in the Google Doc on the initial click, it still takes you to the top of the document, but when I refresh it, it goes to the right place. So I'm not quite sure. We'll check it out in the. It should when it yeah when it lives in the markdown. I think it probably should be fine. I think there's what some about? kind of weird ass Google thing happening here. Okay. You just pulled this back up though. Okay. I, sorry. Yeah, I'll take a look in, in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Um Kevin, do you want to talk about that paragraph? The top? Uh yeah, just as a as a data collection strategy, uh I think that's kind of a Important to address, and it's it's kind of counter to that the line we just deleted, right? So the the previous line had said that uh, something to the effect of uh, faster time means that you're 
development is better or something, some such thing. Uh, but but I think the the, the collection strategies are, are contextually different but, uh, based on what you're looking at. Like mm -hmm. bug, closing a bug report should be faster than a feature request, uh, for example. And you, you can't really compare the two when you're talking about how responsive the community is. Okay. Yeah, I just accepted it because I, th I thought it looked good. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, accepted your argument, Kevin. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I agree with the argument. My question is whether that's a question of interpretation of the data or whether that actually changes the way we collect data. So if we are having a bug and a feature request in a GitHub repository, do those, do if we collect the data differently? So if you're, if you're exploring issues, you might collect it based on tags or labeling, right? So uh, you're testing the time to close of issues that are labeled as bugs versus issues that are labeled as feature requests. So in, in that sense, that would, be, that would be a data collection strategy to separate them at that point. Is that, does that require different implementations? to the GitHub API, or is this just how we deal with the data and filter it later? I think that would be a filter, but the, the title of this is data collection strategies. So I, I think filtering it would be a strategy. Interesting. I mean, I, I agree with Kevin. I think this is something you need to think about as you're collecting the data about, um, the fact that it is, it's very different depending on, on what it is and you may need to collect it slightly differently. So it's, it's not mentioned anywhere else in the document. So perhaps, perhaps your, your issue is correct and it doesn't belong where it's at, but it probably does belong somewhere in the document. I think we should leave it as is for now, since we're gonna run this through a review process anyways. And if we come up with a better place or better way to do this, we can probably address that during the review process. Okay. Okay, thanks. So we're at time. I was I was just putting in the minutes, Don, that do you wanna just move this to the, to the GitHub now? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Move it to GitHub and um, I mean, do we want to tag this for, for continual release now or do we want to have one more look at it once it's in Markdown as a, as a group? I'd be okay with tagging it for release and just opening it for people to yeah, provide feedback. I am, I am too, I think, yeah. There's, I don't think we need to look at it again. Okay. okay. Cool. If we can get the Markdown page created and the issue created today, then I can include it in the weekly newsletter tomorrow. Kevin, I put that as an action item for you. I don't know if that's okay with you. I think Kevin's on mute. Okay. Yes, I am on mute. I, I was talking. I said, I said, yes, I will do that. <laughs> you just put it down there. If you could get this out of here and kind of get it up into the repo, that'd be cool. Yep. Right okay. On. Awesome. So with that, we're ending just on time, 10 minutes left for bio breaks between inevitable more Zoom calls. So thanks everybody. And we'll see you all in two weeks on the 14th. Later. Later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.